Hey, this is Doug Field along with my co-host Ron Bachman, and welcome back uh, to the segment of Healthcare Consumers Radio, where we're going to really get into uh, the, a topic that we continually talk about in controlling costs under the Affordable Care Act. And joining us to lead that discussion is Dr. Putarasu with Vital Springs Technology. Doctor, good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you doing? Doing well. Hey, tell us a little bit about uh, Vital Springs. I know you've been around for quite a while, and uh, uh, you know, just tell us a little bit about, tell our audience a little bit about Vital Springs Technologies. So um, Vital Spring is a uh, software company that was started um, many years ago by me um, I, while I was uh, practicing uh, uh, at Johns Hopkins mm-hmm. um, as part of my MBA thesis. And uh, we have been working with multiple stakeholders in the um in the healthcare industry, uh, in terms of helping them use uh, big data and analytics to improve costs and quality in the healthcare system, so the likes of uh, large employers, um, as well as uh, insurance companies um, and others that desperately need access to uh, to efficient data to help them better manage um, costs in a in a challenging environment. You've just uh, added a couple of uh, very key heavy hitter advisors. You want to tell our audience about uh, who you just uh, brought on board? We did. So we've brought on uh, the likes of uh, 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 Tom Daschle uh, and uh, Newt Gingrich, in addition to some other very uh, prominent uh, leaders within the healthcare industry from both the employer, the insurance, as well as uh, public policy sectors. Um, we're very excited about that because at a time where the company is growing uh, tremendously, um, we are uh, eager to be working with these leaders to uh, continue to accelerate our presence in the market um, in terms of helping transform the industry uh, in improving a lot of the efficiencies that have been a real challenge in terms of how data is accessed in the market, how technology is used to more efficiently process data um, and help companies uh, get much faster in terms of how they innovate. Doctors, Ron Bachman here. You know, the Institute has long had um, a belief that at least two major uh, aspects uh, are necessary for the most effective healthcare consumerism concept. One is engaging the patient uh, financially, giving them a stake in the game. But the other uh, critical part is getting information. Now, most of the information that um, you see out there today uh, and a large part of what you've been uh, very successful at is is helping the providers and the insurance companies with data. Um, Can you talk about that a little bit, how important and what that's done to delivery of care or the development of coverage? Uh, But then maybe reach down into, I know it's a multiple-part question, I guess, but reach down into the consumer themselves. Um, When is the information going to be able to benefit them, and what kind of information can help the consumer make better health and health care decisions? So at the core of getting uh, consumers uh, engaged is – the ability to have data on what's called a longitudinal basis, which mm-hmm. means that, let me give you an example. If I'm a uh, 50-year-old uh, employee of uh, Lockheed Martin, and Lockheed Martin provides uh, insurance for us through United Healthcare, I happen to be part of a corporate wellness program. Uh, I work out at Gold's Gym. I use a Fitbit to track how I'm doing. There's also an incentive program that Lockheed Martin has uh, that will enable me to get a discount on our premiums if I engage in their wellness programs. Um, I uh, shop at, you know, I get my prescription drugs at Walgreens. I, uh, you know, go to Whole Foods to to buy my uh, food. This could be anybody. Mm -hmm. This could be the average American consumer today within the healthcare system. And every single day, think about all of the things that I've mentioned. There is data that is being generated um, within the system about all of my experiences, all the way from where I'm getting my benefits from Lockheed Martin United Healthcare to everything I'm doing in the wellness program to what I'm doing within. my day-to-day life, and potentially what I'm doing when I go see the doctor. 
Mm-hmm. Right? right? And you think about all the data that's being created every single day that is completely fragmented. Now, whether I'm Lockheed Martin, United Healthcare, Walgreens, Fitbit, uh, you know, Healthways, the, the consumer wellness company, um, or the provider, every one of these stakeholders in the system has a singular focus on needing to engage that consumer, right? That's where everybody converges. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But the challenge is that the information for that employee is fragmented. So United Healthcare has a small piece of it. Fitbit has a small piece of it. Mm-hmm. The wellness program has a small piece of it. Lockheed Martin does. Walgreens right. does. But where is the ability to tie together all of that information that is relevant to the health and wellness of that person that is important for optimizing how they engage within the system? Well, it doesn't exist. Mm-hmm. And the only way to engage that person is if you've got a continuous ability to pull all of that together, and everybody needs it. And so what we've accomplished, it took us you know, over a decade to build, was building the plumbing and the connectivity that links all of those disparate pieces so that you can get a 360-degree perspective in terms of what's happening to better engage consumers, because without it, it's a black hole. Right. So, so, Doctor, is this in place right now, being used right now in the market? It is. Okay. It is. And so we're working with many different stakeholders um, in terms of, uh, you know, how they're using our technology and our platform uh, to get there. So this is what a lot of people would, uh, in sort of the shorthand out there, call big data. Right? I mean, you pull all these different um, databases together to create profiles. Um, and that's going to be helpful to better engage the consumer, like you said. What about the flip side? What about the privacy and security of their interactions with those players? How do you deal with that? And is that something that we just, there's too much out there? Uh, you know, the NSA probably is the other source that would have all this information you're talking about. Is that something consumers just have to recognize the reality of the electronic world we're in? It is. It is a reality of that, um, and so privacy is important, but we're not talking about uh, getting into private information and without consumer consent, but the reality is that a lot of information is already generated within the system. So, um, uh, yeah, that is the reality of the world we live in today. So where do we go from here with that? Um, uh, how do you um, – are you applying that? Who are your customers today? Are you applying that to the insurance companies and the hospitals to be able to do better services? Or We are. Okay. Yeah. So then what about the consumer? Is there ultimately some sort of a consumer product, or is it just all this in the background that's working so that the stakeholders can – No, it is for the consumer. At the end of the day, the consumer is who matters the most. Uh-huh. And so for the consumer – what it enables is so the most important thing for the consumer that we got to step back and ask is the fundamental problem. I, I'll put my my doctor's hat on right now. It doesn't matter if, whether you look at it from a physician's perspective, whether you look at it from an insurance company's perspective or an employer's perspective. The fundamental problem that we have in the healthcare system today, um, which is the root cause for why costs will continue to go up is engaging individuals on an ongoing basis to take better care of themselves. Mm -hmm. And the fact that we as individuals don't do it on a consistent basis because we get bored. Mm -hmm. Right? Right. And so when you look at the root cause for why people get bored or why they fatigue, it's because Um, the experience that they have day-to-day is cumbersome, it's hard to access, it's complicated, it's expensive, and it's boring. And the the ability to engage the consumer on an ongoing basis and create an experience that motivates them the same way these same people engage with other things in their day-to-day life, whether it's their mobile phone or whether it's Facebook Mm -hmm. or whether it's Twitter. But there are avenues of communication that have changed the way that we live day-to-day that we are addicted to, but it hasn't happened in healthcare, and you Mm -hmm. have to wonder why. But yet, 
what has transformed that experience in terms of what we do in our day-to-day lives around these other things is because of the data. That drives Facebook, that drives Google, that drives Twitter, that drives Amazon. Why is it that the average American consumer or the average global consumer today is addicted to these services? It's because the data behind it has been able to create an experience that is delightful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let's go upstream, uh, Doctor, and and, and talk about, you know, the employer for a minute. I mean, because this all comes together for the employer who is looking to empower, you know, the forward-thinking employer is looking to empower their consumers to become better consumers of health and health care, meaning their employees. What's the value proposition for the employer that you provide? Uh, It's the same in that Mm -hmm. for an employer today, if you come back to the example that I gave you earlier, an employer today has, um, they're going to have a benefit, they're going to be administering benefits. They're going to choose an administrator for the benefits Mm -hmm. for their programs. They will have a wellness vendor. They'll have a disease management company. They'll have an incentive program. It is not uncommon for an employer today to have four or five uh, different things um, and, uh, it is um, it's fragmented and it's chaotic. Mm-hmm. And so what the employers desperately need right now is something that enables them to bring all of those pieces together, that enables them to synthesize that experience and effectively have those programs uh, work in tandem to optimize mm-hmm. the engagement of the employee. Um, and that's the black hole today, is that there is no technology that is able to do that. Um, and that is what we're solving for employers today to help close that gap. Doctor, you, your solution would appear to have the opportunity to, to tie in to uh, some of these private exchange technology platforms. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's a great point. Um, uh, because... Um, Today in the exchanges, what is the problem? That you go in and you enroll, and you know there is uh, no means of. It's, it's, first of all, let's step back. It's very tough to navigate. So you got to mm-hmm. go from the time you enroll. Uh, imagine the nightmare for the consumer because you got to go to the insurance website, <laughs> and then you've got to log into all of their programs. It's a complete black hole yeah, for right. the consumer as well as for the insurance company. The exchanges, the way they're set up right now, are not doing anything other than providing a gateway for people to buy insurance. And then what? Simply buying insurance is not going to give them access to everything that they need in terms of their care, Mm -hmm. and it's not going to do anything to either educate, motivate, or engage that individual in constantly taking care of their health. What we don't want to create the impression is that we're giving them a credit card or a debit card that basically says do whatever you want and we're going to pay for it because you now have been approved, that that is a a futile mission uh, and the wrong message that we're sending to consumers. Yeah, uh, Dr. We're at the end of our program, and this has been very interesting, guys. We'll have to have you on again. Leave leave our audience with a uh, single thought you'd like to leave them with. Technology can transform healthcare, and we need to use it to transform it the way that we have within what Google, Facebook, and Amazon have done, and that's the future of healthcare. And we can do it to engage consumers as motivated participants in changing the system. Doctor, thank you so much. Enjoy your thank weekend you. up there, and uh, look forward to talking to you again soon. To our audience, stay tuned for the next segment of Healthcare Consumers and Radio.